Is the new or the old grind better in DBD? Behavior has promised they are going to change the grind over the summer. Thing is, this is not necessarily a good thing. Let's crunch some numbers and find out if the new grinding system is really gonna be an improvement over the old. Right off the gate, let's state the one thing. It's better for killers, but much, much worse for survivors. The time it takes to max out one survivor, assuming perfect games and no matchmaking times, is 192,000 points per hour doing 632k games an hour. That takes 8 hours to hit level 50, which, let's assume would be enough to have one meta survivor after you've unlocked the meta perks from 4 of them. If you want let's say a white built with prove thy worth, dead hard, borrowed time and spine chill, a pretty workable build that hits objectives, survivability, anti-stealth and altruism, all important things for a survivor who plays to win. It would take you around 40 hours to achieve. You want a couple extra perks like Windows of Opportunity, Lithe or Blood Pact. You only have to raise a character to the corresponding level for that perk to be teachable. Then you'll have to grind for a few more hours on your main. Building a survivor main who has good, even if not completely meta perks, takes around 40 to 60 hours, depending on skill and random drop luck. With the new grind system, it's going to take 3 complete maxed levels for the level 3 perk you want, at 8 hours per prestige level, which directly translates to more grind, not less. Let's say you want the same white build, you can get prove level 3 before hitting level 50, but there is no chance you will get dead hard 3 or borrowed 3 before hitting prestige 3 with both Bill and David King. If you want a generic like spine chill, you don't have to level anyone else, but if you want a teachable, it's time to prestige another character, to get the number of hours a build will take. It's 24 hours per every character whose perks you want. Even if you want to just have all the perks on one character, normally Claudette because she's short and easy to hide with OK pain grunts, right now it would take 8 hours per character, then around 100 hours for grinding every perk on her. However, with the new system, you will unlock all the perks for everyone but spend much more time doing so. With the current one and the RNG factor it's hard to give a very accurate guess, but with the new one it's easy to know how much time we'll need to prestige 3 everyone, 31 survivors, times 24 per the hours of perfect games you'd need to prestige everyone equals 744 hours. That's a full month of playing dead by daylight, and with every new character, you'd have to slap on another 24 hours. Some chapters have two survivors, and the Resident Evil Project W is already confirmed to have Ada Wong and Rebecca Chambers. So as you can see, the grind which was merely crazy before is going to turn utterly nutterly butterly now. For killers, it's handy to already have the unlocked perks for everyone. Makes leveling easier with new characters, which is the main benefit of this new system. Killers are much more painful to level up, needing specific perks to get the most out of them. For example, Thanatophobia is a crappy perk on just about everyone but Legion, but you'd still want that if you were to play Legion. BBQ is used overwhelmingly for the grind reduction aspect, but you need to buy and level Leatherface for it all the same. Just having these perks unlocked for being Prestige 3 is nice for killers and it will encourage the one thing BHVR cares about the most, sales. No reason for you to stick to what you know in killers anymore. Now you have BBQ for everyone, go try out Trickster and enjoy it. Cash out beforehand, though. The time it took to level a killer before is much the same rough estimation as a survivor, 8 hours of perfect games. On average, survivors get around 20k blood pints per game. Killers typically get more, but even being very optimistic, leveling a killer right now is plain horrible. If you want BBQ. You need to level up Leatherface, if you want Corrupt, you need to level up Plague, want Pump, you need the Clown, and if you want Floods of Rage, you need to level up Sadako. The fun part is, of course, none of these killers are even good at all outside of their perks. You can just learn Blight or Nurse and play exclusively them, but if your BP go to the other characters, you'll be screwing yourself out of add-ons. The amount of stuff you need to buy and level just to have one decent killer is pretty crazy, and with the arrival of new, meta-changing perks like Floods of Rage, 
It's getting harder and harder to sell that DBD is not a pay to win game. Nice. Honestly, justifying it with the good old but you need to do the grind as well. Doesn't really make it better. Dead by Daylight is structured like an MMO. It's basically a second job you pay to do by this point, and it's completely overtaken by power creep. If it was in my hands, I'd just unlock all the perks at level 3 on Prestige 1. That would be a really good way to sort this thing out. Let people who want to play to death play to death, but let the rest of us just get our power spikes early. As it stands, you're just a punching bag for your first 100 hours anyway, on both roles. And the matchmaking system barely if ever bothers to give you people within your experience range. So, two hours later. In short and being extremely optimistic with match waiting times and player performance, 744 hours to max out the survivor role, 672 hours to max out the killer role as opposed to the 100 or so hours to have one alright main right now. The new grind system is more reliable but simply put, what they are doing is increasing the grind in hours, not decreasing it, no matter how behavior tries to spin it. Slap that on the back of the game box. At this point, behavior should warn new players of just what they're getting into. Good night, reindeer.